Hi there, and welcome to my Map Designer mod showcase for RimWorld. I'm Icon, and I want to show you what this mod can do for you, what you can expect from it, and what kind of results you will see from it. I'm using alongside with the Map Designer mod the Map Reroll tool because it really fits well together, and I would even say use them together because it's really awesome to see how this, uh, to practice how this tool works for yourself. So all the mods used in this ver in this video are shown in the description below, of course. So first up, we're going to uh, go into the actual settings of the map designer. The map designer mod is accessible in the options menu, and then you have to go into the mod settings. The map designer alters the um, generation variables of a map tile. You can uh, set up if it's limited to your home map or if it can or if these settings you're configuring here are um, chosen for the whole world, that's your own thing. As you can see here, um, we can configure mountains, terrain, things, rivers, and certain map features. This is a very, very detailed and powerful tool, allowing you to change pretty much everything which happens on the map, and it can get a little bit complicated, and if you just wanna enjoy how it works or check out what it does, you can also use the presets here. These range from a fertile valley, valley over a total random, uh, over to a total randomization of the, um, of the presets, which is completely chaotic. So let's use the vanilla preset and show you how my map reroll would look like. So this is the preview um, for another map on that tile. Always keep in mind the map designer takes the map tile you're at and changes the variables for it. But it won't change ever the map tile itself. So you can't expect on a uh, temperate forest tile suddenly to um, generate um, ice sheet stuff or something like that. That won't happen. That's not what this mod does. It only, um, the mod only shakes up things and changes things. So as you see here, vanilla was looking a little bit boring. So let's use the uh, canyon preset, apply preset. And as you see here, I'm getting a nice canyon uh, situation and that's something completely different. And uh, let's go for, this isn't natural, strange unnatural mountains littered with ancient dangers. So um, doesn't look too different, but those mountains here are really looking very smooth and very odd. And um, yeah, this is, well, perfect if you wanna experiment with the settings and without getting too involved. But my major focus in this mod will, uh, in this video will be to explain how you how these, um, things here work and what they do. So you don't have to worry about that too much. So with the, we're going to start with the mountains tab. The first three things here are pretty self-explanatory. We set up the amount of mountains, the size of those, and their smoothness. With smoothness, uh, the game defines how, um, how smooth the corners are. Let's get back to the this isn't natural setting. And you see here, smoothness is here set up to very smooth. And that's what happens if we have these things. For example, let's put it into very rough so you can see the difference. This makes the mountains all fragmented, fragmented and shattery. So that's what the smoothness rating does. And always uh, keep in mind there's uh, a uh, vanilla setting so you know once you're back to the normal settings the game usually would use. So these are pretty self-explanatory, like I said. You can also say that the map should always ensure an exit to exit the map, actually. Really good if you want to um, have maps that are just non-escapable. But let's check out what's uh, here. So um, we have here the option to change how hills and mountains get distributed. And this is really where the mod starts to be fun. So all check marks disabled is a vanilla setting. So natural hill distribution, um, let's enable that and see what happens there. It's just uh, a natural hill distribution as we see here. Let's show you what happened here. Just bigger hills. Centralized is uh, where things get more interest interesting. So I can now say I want a center size of 60% of the map width and now I can configure the SKU. The SKU basically allows me to choose if I want to live inside of a hill crater or 
rather have a hill crater in the center of my map. This is wonderful. This tool gives you a lot of uh, variety there. And uh, well, we can also say we're, we're going to have a big bad hill here or something like that. This is really lovely. I really like that. And um, this is giving you the option to create maps which won't, wouldn't spawn normally. And that's why I like it. Now, down the middle is exactly the tool that has been used for the canyon. You can set up where um, the mountain should be uh, rolling to, uh, through your map. Let's uh, use that angle. There's again the size meter and the skew. The skew again uh, decides if you're living in the canyon or the canyon is living on your map. Well, not exactly, but you see here. It's either more mountain in the center of the map or a free center of the map. Between that, if we go for a 50-50 setting, you see here, these settings, I would strongly advise to use extremer settings or otherwise you wouldn't uh, enjoy too much out of that. And last but not least, you can also shove all those mountains to one side. Really cool if you have that certain uh, idea in mind. So here you can see everything's possible. Okay, that's the mountains. Pretty easy once you know how to use it. The skew setting really um, con confused me at the beginning, but I think uh, you're less confused than me now. All right, let's get over to the terrain settings. Fertility, water levels, and rock types. Really groovy stuff. So we can change here the overall fertility of the map and the overall water level of the map. So um, here we get the uh, warning here, does not affect rivers, coastlines, or other features. So this is really just the water on your map. And there's a, an important check mark, all non-buildable terrain counts as water. That means every piece of mud and other um, building impeding tile is counted as water. I can show you the difference here. So let's set up the water level to 200%. You won't be uh, noticing much. Let's remove the check mark here. And uh, there are more bodies of water now, small bodies of water only, but that's because I'm not living on a tile which generates these more often. So uh, there's almost no difference visible, but that's because my map tile here, let's give you a quick look, is in the center of the world. Um, this would be making way more difference if you had natural, more natural water uh, bodies. But as you see here, this is my natural water distribution, only these three ponds. So I guess you might already have noticed what happened there. Also, I can now configure the amount of rock types per map which is really cool, and uh, allow modded biomes with special rocks. Well, only if you want to use that. Use that really carefully, and you can also choose what rock types are allowed. Really cool stuff. So that's all about the terrain. Of course, there's always the reset terrain button, and always, I really, I really like this uh, reset to default uh, thingy here, because you can just uh, configure so friggin' much here. Okay, things. So plants average amount. Um, you can see here. Uh, let's let's just uh, amp up everything to an insane level, and I, and that really should showcase. Well, not the oh well, whatever. Also the animatrices. And let's roll a map like this. Well, let's see what happens. I hope it'll. I hope it's going to be as fun as I uh, as I think it'll be, because I think that. Um, should give you a nice impression about what the uh, settings can do here. I mean, they are all quite straightforward, but uh, I really like to do it though, nevertheless a little bit more um, specific. So you see here, it's not even that brutally dramatic. Um, there's a lot of wildlife here, but I would say these settings didn't strike as hard as I expected them to to do. And that's why I really uh, like to use the um, map reroll um, mod alongside, because this way I, you can check out if the settings are really what you want. But uh, what amount, anybody? Look at, those look at those baddies here. If you would amp up the amount of mountains, you could clearly uh, create craziest uh, environments. So yeah let's get over to the rivers um river size average river banks river style this configures only um 
the situation if there is already a river, of course. Since my um, map doesn't sport a river, obviously, I can't, uh, I can't configure it. But as you see here, um, river direction is after we've seen the mountain settings pretty self-explanatory. River size, river style, either uh, running through your map or having a spring which start, starts near the middle of your map and continues to the edge. And uh, well, river banks are also something and what kind of shore terrain should be used. You can see here the individualization is insane. And that's really cool if you want to create a certain type of river map. And last but not least, there's the map features um, thing. And it doesn't do too much, but it can add perfectly round islands into your map. Um, let's see. This will not show up in map reroll previews, but can still be rerolled, I see. So, um, does that mean it just shows it to me wrong? I haven't tried out this feature um, before um, doing the video. I thought it would be, um, it would be a little bit uh, less weird. <laughs> because it's the first um, function of the mod um, surprising me at that point. So, um, yeah, so that's uh, now what happened. Um, while it didn't show up in the map preview, um, I, cr I created now this nightmare. Um, jam filled with ruins, animals, and a perfectly round island. So, um, as we look again here, this is still those crazy settings for the things. And um, yeah, we can also go for a natural lake. Well, let's stay with a perfectly round island. So Mo um, you can also spawn multiple islands and uh, a natural lake situation. Lake size, let's say the lake is 50% of the map and uh, perfectly round. The settings are now not really um, surprising anymore. Saltwater lake or uh, what kind of shore terrain. Um, as I mentioned before, these uh, things are now, after we've looked into the settings, pretty self-explanatory. And uh, I think that covers up all the things the mod can do. Um, last but not least, I want to talk about how, how I personally would say the mod is used best. And that's uh, use it with a certain idea in your mind and uh, try to uh, live through it. I mean, this looks crazy. This looks so crazy and so fun at the same time. Um, I wouldn't want to play it because it's um, stiff, uh, way too stuffed with materials, but at the same time, I enjoy the option of creating um, certain environments, and I hope you guys will enjoy that too now. So if there are any questions about that mod, or if you feel like I haven't uh, talked about something which was important, drop a comment down below or whatever you have on your mind, drop it to and drop it down there too. Leave a like if I was able to help you a bit and leave a subscription if you want to join the channel. I'd be super happy if you do. But nevertheless, let me thank you for your attention and I hope we're going to see each other soon again. Bye bye.